AppWrite's database service allows you to create structured collections of documents, query and filter lists of documents, and manage an advanced set of read and write access permissions. To create a collection, visit your AppWrite console and click the database on the side menu. To add a database, click Add Database, enter a name for the database, and click Create. Next, click Add a Collection. You can choose to auto-generate a collection ID or enter one manually. Enter a name for the collection and click Create. After the collection is created, you are taken to the Settings tab. Here you can see the collection name, the collection ID. You can also copy the collection ID. You can view the collection as JSON, toggle the collection on and off, and delete the collection. Each collection has permissions you can configure for read and write access. You can set permissions at the collection level. Permissions can be assigned by user ID, team ID, role, and more. Permissions are set as common delimited values in the input boxes below. As an example, adding role member for read access and role member for write access allows any authenticated user to read the documents and write to the documents in this collection. Click on the learn more link to see a complete list of permissions available for the collection. The permissions page in the AppWrite documentation gives you the complete list of permissions available to use for your collection. You can also set permissions for each individual document in the collection by choosing the document level permission. Permissions are configured on each document when choosing this option and overrides the overall collection level permissions. Choose the appropriate permissions for your collection and click update to save the changes. After your collection is configured, you can create attributes. Attributes are used to define the structure of your documents and help the AppWrite API validate your user's input. To create your first attribute, click Create Attribute and then click Add Attribute. Choose the appropriate attribute type for the data you want to store. Here I'll choose the string attribute. Enter an attribute ID using only alphanumeric characters. Choose a length for the string and select whether the attribute is required or if it is a single value or an array. You can also set default values for some attributes. After you're done, click Create. Create as many attributes as you need to structure the data you want to store. I'll add another attribute that's a Boolean named is complete. Set it to required and click Create. Next is indexes. Indexes are used by databases to quickly locate data without having to search through every document for results. To ensure the best performance, AppWrite requires an index for every query. To add an index, click on Add Index, enter a name for the index key, select a type, whether it be key, unique values, or full text search. Choose the attributes for the index, which may be one or more fields that you have, and click Create. You may have multiple indexes for different queries when using AppWrite SDKs in your application. There's also a tab to monitor activity for any action performed on the collection, such as inserts, updates, deletes, and creates. In addition to activity, there are used to statistics about total documents and document operations that are collected over time. And if you need to make changes to the settings for the collection, you can go back to the settings tab. To add a document, Go to the Documents tab and click Add Document. For this document, I'll enter some content and set is complete to false. For document level permissions, you can view and modify them in the permission section for each document and click Create. This will give you a view of the document ID and the collection ID that this document belongs to. You can also view the document as JSON and delete the document if necessary or make updates to the individual documents stored in the collection. You can also view the activity for each document and that data is also collected over time. Going back to the collection page, you can see the document is entered and it shows the unique ID and the data that is entered for that particular document.